This is how you get into your dream school in your dream country. International students. This video is going to be very useful to those of you who want to study abroad or who might want to do that in the future and just want to know what that involves. I'm going to be talking about studying abroad in the environmental and the wildlife biology fields. However, a lot of the advice I'm going to give is relevant for people in other fields, so I encourage you if you're outside of those fields to also stay tuned. I am also going to do part two to this video. I'm going to release it at the same time and it's going to be how to work abroad. So the idea is you can watch this video on how to study abroad and then how to work abroad and how to transition that degree that you got internationally into a job internationally. Studying abroad in another country is really fun and really exciting. However, it can also be a really good way Way to change your life if you are in a country that doesn't have many opportunities or in a country that you want to move out of for whatever reason. However, there are a lot of pitfalls and common mistakes that people who do want to study abroad make. I'm gonna give a bit of a disclaimer as every country is different. If you want more specific information for your country, I highly encourage you to seek out an immigration lawyer or do some research online. I am not an immigration lawyer. I did move to another country when I graduated. You can hear more about that in my why I left America when I became a scientist video I'll link to above and I currently live in Canada I'm gonna split this study video into planning in advance of moving for university actually applying and the kind of things that you need to have on your application, the actual process of moving, securing visas, and how you can stay happy in your new place and set yourself up for success in your new country. I'm gonna try to pack in as much details and as much tips and information that I have. First, you need to make a plan. So you need to decide whether or not your plan is to stay forever in your, I'm gonna call it target country, the country you want to move to. If you really just wanna to go to school there, cause that's really gonna change your visa situation, your overall goals for school. Generally the best practice when you're trying to answer this question is you want to go to school or at least try to where you actually want to work. This is totally not a requirement because like I said I went to school in California and I, I now work in Canada but just keep in mind that university allows you to build connections and those connections will help you get a job in the future and also when you're doing your internships and volunteer work during school it's going to be at local organizations and those organizations organizations are going to be much more willing to hire you when you graduate. And question number two to think about during the planning stage is, is there jobs in the environmental and wildlife field available in the in your target country. Make sure too you also look at the specialty you wanna do. For example, it might not be the best idea to study marine biology when you're moving to a landlocked country. I'm gonna also link above to my majors video where if you aren't sure what major you wanna study in, I go through each of the common majors and the pros and cons of each one. Also think about what jobs are most relevant. For example, a wildlife degree might not be as relevant in some countries as a environmental waste management type of specialty would be. So try to take into consideration the availability and the ease of getting a job in your field in the country that you want to live in eventually. Also, one way you can do that is by checking job boards right now before you even apply to school and see how many job postings are available and what kind of things that they are asking for. One of the biggest factors for a lot of people is going to be cost, especially international students where they're often charged a higher cost of admission. Most countries are going to require you to show proof of funds before they'll give you a student visa. So whether that's your availability to get loans or actual money in your bank account, you you need to show that you can support yourself and pay for your education before moving to that country. There are limited scholarships available for international students, at least in the US and Canada. It's more common for domestic students to be offered those kinds of scholarships. However, look in your home country and see if your home country offers any scholarships for going abroad. Um, that might be your best bet as far as scholarships, but don't immediately discount it. There still might be opportunities available. Also, I recommend that you research the program that you're looking at going into and to maybe reach out to some current students if you find them on Facebook or LinkedIn or even current professors, they, you might get an answer. I wouldn't be afraid to at least try to reach out. The only tip I have with reaching out is make sure you have good grammar and good spelling because disjointed, confusing emails are just gonna get ignored. And just be 
polite and respectful of their time and don't demand that they answer you right away because that's really off-putting for a lot of people and they'd be doing you a favor. Pick a school with a good international students program. They're likely gonna have a website that's dedicated towards international students and gives a little bit of information that's specific to international students. And when you find that website for your school that you're interested in, that's a good sign because that means there are a lot of international students and they're really trying to attract those kinds of people to the school. You can find out whether your school has an international program by Googling the name of your school and international students. Next, let's talk about the best schools for international students. I am not gonna go through every single school that I recommend um, for international students studying environmental and wildlife biology. However, I'm gonna give a few examples on the screen now. You can pause and take a look I'm not gonna include any other countries because I am not familiar enough to strongly support um, any one particular school outside of US and Canada because I've never lived there. Preparing your application in order to get into your new school. So you're likely going to need to pass a proficiency test in a language that the school either speaks during classes or in the country that the school is located in. For example, in Canada, that would be an English test. So if your English or whatever language you need to get into that school isn't great, you can still sometimes get in, but you just have to promise to go to like intensive English classes before. You're also probably gonna need your secondary school or high school transcripts in order to apply to schools. That's pretty standard for most universities. You're also going to need to fill out an application. It's usually all online now and pay an application fee and those can range anything from being free to uh, $100 or more US. Typically you're going to apply in winter, spring to start that current year. So you'd apply in, for example, January to start for the fall semester of that year in your new country. Obviously my advice is get as good grades as you can. However, grades aren't everything. You're gonna also need to show your extracurricular activities. If you have any volunteer work, jobs outside of school, sometimes you're going to need letters of recommendation from teachers, coaches. So also start thinking about who you're gonna have as your references. And there may be additional testing requirements such as the SAT, depending on what school you go to. And you can find all of that information on the International Students Admission website of the school that you're interested in going to. Once you're accepted, what do you do? So you have to figure out how to get a student visa and you have to get your student visa. That's the most important thing to do before you get into your new country. Do it right away because there's so often some waiting times, application times, so get that started ASAP. You're also gonna need to get your funds available to pay for your school. So now you're applying for student loans, you're applying for the scholarships, continuing to apply for scholarships, funds, grants, asking your parents if they'll pay for your school, all of that you need to be doing right now so that you can show proof of funds for your visa. You wanna start selling your stuff, you wanna start figuring out what you're gonna bring. Usually the least amount of stuff you can bring is possible because a lot of times you'll be in dorms so you don't have much room to bring a whole lot of different junks and now you're also going to be working with your academic counselors to pick courses or you're going to be looking through your university's website to see what courses you need to take there usually is set courses for environmental science and wildlife biology that you're supposed to take your first two years and usually those are the more basic courses such as like math and biology and now let's talk about once you've arrived how you can best succeed as an international student there isn't this idea of culture shock. You love your new country to start and as you get settled in back into your routine you really start seeing the negative sides of the new country you're in. Just be aware this is normal and almost everyone goes through these kind of feelings the first year. Reach out to counselors if you need it and reach out to your peers in order to support you in this transition to your new country. Make sure you make other connections with international students but also as well the local students because the local students often Often have friends of friends and parents and connections that will help you get a job eventually. Plan your ability to stay in the country that you're currently in by looking at visas and work visas and postgraduate work visas, working holidays. For the next steps on how to get a job after you are graduating with your international degree, watch my next video I link to in the description box below and I'll also link to right above. I recommend this one for anyone thinking they might want to stay and work in the country that they are going to be studying in. I also want the comment section to be an open discussion where people can ask for advice with their own specific country and then hopefully someone who goes to school in that country can answer that question because I don't know everything. If you're interested in learning more about how to get a job in the environmental field, subscribe to my channel down below. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.